Good morning, church. Would you go ahead and get, stand with us this morning? We're going to worship, and I want to invite our Kids Own Kid City um, Junior High High Schoolers come on up to the front and worship with us. This is how we worship in our in our uh, ministries, and so we want to invite you to do that with us this morning. It's a little different, um, but we're going to celebrate together. We're going to worship together, and I would love to see your beautiful faces up here with us. So let's worship. And Christ is my first foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad, and I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down. He's faithful
rest on us, come rest on us, as the Spirit's moving over the water, Spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us, and come down, Spirit when you move and make my heart pound, when you feel the room, you're here. When you feel the room, you're hearing, I know you're moving. I'm hearing, I know you feel me. Feel us, Lord. Sing it with me. Has the Spirit?
Lord, we believe that you love us. Your best intentions are for us. And so, Lord, we worship you as an offering of our thanksgiving for your goodness, for your mercy, Father, for where you're already working. And if you believe that with me this morning, we're going to say amen in agreement of what he's already doing, that he's already working, he's fighting your battles, um, and what he has done this morning, what he's spoken to you. So when I say one, two, three, amen, you're going to yell amen. Ready? One, two, three, amen. Amen. Awesome. All right. Students, you can go ahead and take your seats, and we'll move on to the rest of our service. Amen. Amen. Go on and shuffle, get that shuffle going. Hey, how many of you guys ready for Next Gen Sunday? Come on, make some noise, y'all ready for us? Oh boy. Oh yeah. (laughs) Well, hey, as some of you guys are getting to your seats, my name is Amon, uh, and I serve as a high school pastor here at East Hill. And And my name is Andrew Hayworth. I'm the junior high pastor here at East Hill. Hey. Hey, we're about to get into into greeting and and hanging out with each other, but just before that, we wanted to give a quick talk on a tithes and offerings. So I'm gonna speak real quick out of uh, Luke chapter 21, verse one to four, and it's Jesus, uh, Jesus' encounter with the widow. Check this out. Uh, he says, and he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he also saw a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all, for, the, for all these out of their abundance have put into the offering for God, but she out of her poverty put in all the, li- all the livelihood that she had. You see, I love this because um, I don't know if you were like me growing up, but uh, I, I so often associated generosity with being wealthy. Wow. And, I just, and, and what that did was it disqualified me from being generous and what God has called us to do, right? So I'm like, ah, I don't have that much money. Things are tight. I'm raising kids. Not really me, maybe some of you guys. Uh, I, got, I got things to pay for. <laughs> A car note, mortgage, retirement's coming up, money's tight, I can't necessarily, there's just too much going on, there's too much financial pressure, but you see, what we see through this widow here is that what giving requires is trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what she said, without even saying it, was God, I'm gonna trust that you're gonna provide for me more than I can provide for me. And that's why we give today. We give because we say, God, we believe that you're going to provide more, way better than what I could provide for myself. So that's why I give. That's why I tithe. And uh, some ways that we can do that is there's some boxes uh, all across the auditorium that say tithe and offerings. There, so you can just uh, fill in the envelope and, and, and stash in there. But also on the seat backs in front of you, there's a QR code where you could uh, just click give. And there's some other stuff we got going on today, Andrew. Yeah. So today is our next Gen Takeover. Let's as you go. Guys have already seen. Today is also a special yeah. day that represents the day that all of our students will move up. Let's the grade. go. Let's go. And so, yeah. after service, we want to invite you all, whether you're a student or a parent or a grandparent, to hang out with us in the foyer after service. We're going to have donuts and coffee and yep. games. And Let's we go. will be there, Amon, yeah. myself, Emmanuel, mm-hmm. our young adults pastor, as well yeah. as April and Rebecca and Liz. We would love to meet you yeah. and your students as they transition into different ministries. So please come find us after service. Yeah, come say what's up. But in the meantime, we're about to get into service, okay? Before we do that, we want to hang out. So let's all stand up on our feet. I know we just said sit down, but let's stand on our feet. I know, I know. Get them aerobics in. We're going to get some glutes for the summer, okay? (laughs) And just going to say hi to some people around you, all right? See you guys in a second. family. My name is Nate and I'm one of the pastors here at ESO Church. Thank you so much for joining in our Sunday experience this morning. At this moment in our service, we have the opportunity to practice generosity. We believe that God is generous and so are we. There are many ways to practice generosity, but right now we get to make a difference through a financial blessing. Just look for the link in the chat that says esil.org forward slash give. When we give, we join ESIL on mission to reach and make a difference in our community as well as a global impact with the gospel of Jesus. If you would like to learn more about how we impact our community, you can visit esil.org forward slash community outreach. Another way to practice generosity is by sharing the story of Jesus. We believe found people find people. 
We get to do this by simply sharing our Sunday experience with others. If you are joining in on ESO.Live, go ahead and save someone a digital seat by clicking on the invite button in the chat. You'll be able to share our Sunday experience with friends and family. If you're on Facebook, you can tag five people in the chat as well as clicking on the share button. Let's encourage someone today with the God of hope, Jesus. If you consider yourself to be new here at East Hill, I would like for you to know if you are new, you are family. And our mission is simple. We are a growing family who helps others know, love, and serve Jesus. Relationships are our priority. So let's connect. First, head to esil.org forward slash new. Here you will fill out a short form with basic information so our team can reach out to you. Second, if you are in the Gresham area, I would love to personally invite you to come to our meet and greet that happens every second Sunday of the month, immediately following our first and second services in the lobby. Just look for the large banner that says, New Here. We cannot wait to see you. If online is a better option for you, no sweat, we got you covered. Go ahead and email me at natep at eso.org. Once you do that, we can connect by using any digital platform that you would like like FaceTime or Zoom. Online family, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We pray that you have an amazing encounter with Jesus. Now let's jump back into service together. Good morning, East Hill. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Pastor Liz, and I am the family pastor here at East Hill. And if you're wondering what that means, I have the joy and the honor and the privilege of working with the kiddos from zero to fifth grade. And I have an amazing team. I have Rebecca Marlowe, who oversees all of our kids zone. And then we have April Mendiola, who oversees Kid City. I know. My team makes me look really good. In fact, I call them uh, Team Awesome quite regularly. Um, if you are just joining us online, welcome. We are so glad you guys are here. One of the things that we want to get started with is, and we've been talking about it, heart for the house. Okay, so kiddos, you're probably hearing heart for the house and going, what is that, right? Okay, so heart for the house. We are entering into a season of choosing to be generous to help take care of our house. When I say house, I'm not talking about the place you sleep. I'm talking about our house, our East Hill Family Church. And we do have a goal to raise by the end of July. And so kiddos, this would be a great time to have a conversation with your parents and say, what are we doing? Now, sometimes, when we say yes to something, that means we also have to say no to something, right? So maybe you guys as a family can get really creative about what you're gonna say no to in this season so that we can all have a heart for the house together. All right, and if you're curious about how to give on those, the same way that we receive tithes and offerings, you can click on that little link that's on the back of your seat back, you can click on the link online, um, or you can always access one of the boxes at the back. We also have VBS coming. I'm really excited about VBS. Holds a special place in my heart. Um, this year we are making waves. I know, how fun is that? If you're curious about VBS, it's in the evening. We feed your kids dinner. Okay, they get, they get a t-shirt and crafts and entertainment. And so some of you have been wondering, oh man, when are we ever gonna get a date in? This is your time. This is your time. $35 for the whole week, you can't beat that. And if you are on the other hand are like, okay, well that doesn't apply to me. Guess what? We need volunteers. <laughs> and so you can also sign up to be a volunteer. Head over to easthill.org forward slash kids. And we are so excited about that and cannot wait to have some wonderful time with our kiddos learning about God and how we get to make waves by being empowered by the Holy Spirit. I know, it's so good, I'm so excited. All right, on that note, we are celebrating today, right? Woohoo! Okay, what are we celebrating? Okay! <laughs> Part of being a family is that when we celebrate, we get to share stories. So it's not just enough that I'm telling you, oh, we have kids moving into the next grade. It's not enough to say, oh, we have some students graduating. 
No, we wanna hear stories because it's in those stories that we get to celebrate together as a family. So if you guys will take a moment, we're gonna watch some of videos of our kids sharing their stories and why we're celebrating with them today. I've been coming here since I was in kindergarten, so that's a big deal for me. I've been coming here for six years. I was always that one kid in my school that got left out of everything. And then every Sunday when I came to church, I was a part of a group. I always felt like someone was gonna leave me out, but instead I got to join into groups, I got to hang out with people, I got to have fun, I got to sing and dance, and I enjoyed it so much. I'm giving a note to all of those who are going, in the sick, going into fifth grade, it isn't scary, it's fun. Um, a big impact for me was during COVID. Um, we met every Tuesday and Wednesday over Zoom, and that really gave me a sense of community when we did have one during COVID. Um, it also, uh, I've learned to hear God's word a lot and hear his voice more and I'm definitely a lot better at devoing and just having him impact my life more. Another one was all the amazing leaders here who have definitely changed my life and impacted it. Um, Andrew, amazing youth pastor and Alex Mendiola. He has been my leader ever since I've been here and he has, I've learned some great things from him and he's still my leader to this day and I am still uh, learning more. It kept making me uh, feel loved and supportive throughout my life that I have people to go to every week and talk to them about like my life and they helped me go through the bad, difficult times in my life and from that day I just kept pushing through everything and I felt uh, loved and cared for in my community and ever since then I've been a leader here and I enjoy coming to church. After graduating high school and college, um, East Young Adults has been a really great sense of community, um, getting to know new people, um, and just diving into the Word, um, and people like Emmanuel and Keisha have been so amazing and so impactful in my life, and I'm just so grateful for them and the uh, Young Adults ministry as a whole. Oh, that is so good. Part of what we're celebrating today is that we are a multi-generational church. Let me say it again. We're a multi-generational church. Yeah. Yes, this is a good thing. It is a good thing. So if you've been noticing, all throughout our service, we have young adults. We have some high school students, some junior high students. We have some kiddos, right? And um, I have the privilege of having up here two special guests. And um, yes, so this is Keanu. And this is Hawaii. And, <laughs> and they're gonna be helping me today. But um, what I love, one of the reasons why I asked for them to be up here is this is a beautiful example of what our church is all about. Keanu is in college, college age, young adults, in that range, okay. And then Pauai is in elementary school and they are here all the time. Keanu serves our, on Wednesday nights for our junior high students and he's committed, he's every week. And then on top of that, every Sunday morning in Kid Zone, he is loving on those five-year-olds. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, but here's the deal, guys. This just didn't just happen. The reason why Keanu, the reason why Pauai has a heart for serving and loving our church is because of their mama and dad. You will see the Surreal family, uh, Surreal family, all, the Surreal family all the time serving, all the time. And so if you wonder, is it worth taking my kids to go do stuff? Yes. Does, does you serving in a ministry make an impact? Yes. It's important. And I'm so excited that they get to be up here with me today. They are gonna help with an object lesson. And if you're not familiar with what an object lesson is, it's using an object to help us understand something a little better. Okay, kind of sounds like a parable. My, a little bit like Jesus. Um, so. 
what we're going to do is we are going to have them and they're going to start making something. Now, today we're going to be talking about transitions and we're going to be talking about our environments and how we transition from one thing to the next. Now we have three ingredients, three main ingredients that we're gonna be working with. We're gonna be working with the heavy whipping cream. We're gonna be working with some sugar and some vanilla. You guys can go ahead and start putting those three ingredients in that bag. Now, I know, yay. Okay, now if I have those three ingredients, I can actually make quite a few things. If I was to take those things and add a whole lot of air, I would get some whipped cream and it would be amazing, especially with those fresh strawberries that are coming out. If I was to make all those things together and maybe cook it over a stove, I might be able to get a good custard going, right? Maybe some creme brulee, maybe add some more eggs to just thicken it up real good. Um, some flan, right? What about if I was to keep it cold and continue to whip it beyond a whipped cream? I could get it like a really crazy sweet butter, right? Okay. What makes it different is the environment in which we're putting it into. And so what they're gonna do is they're, as they're adding all these ingredients, they're gonna actually put it into an environment that's not necessarily what we would like or prefer. And what I mean by this is it's hard, it's cold, and it's really salty and kind of bitter. Um, can you guys see this up, up where you guys are at online? Yeah, we, we following. We got some rock salt here. Do you guys know what this is used for? <gasps> Yay! Yes, it is. I mean, there's a picture on there, but I didn't know if you could see the picture. It's used for ice cream. So if we have some rock salt that's used for ice cream, we have some ingredients that's also used for ice cream. Anyone want to take a guess what we're making today? We're making ice cream. But here's the deal. In order for this ice cream to work, it has to be surrounded by something cold. That has to be the environment. You have to have this rock salt. And this is not normal looking salt. Can you guys see how big these chunks are? This is like choke on it. This is like a choking hazard. We, we need to make a choking hazard. Be careful, okay. <laughs> With that and us talking about transitions, we have all these kiddos in the room who are transitioning. And this has been a hard year for transitions, right? We went from being in school to now online and then back to school. And then sometimes we'd have these weeks where we'd have to go back online a little crazy. I know for myself, like, oh, I really liked being in my PJs all day. I'm sorry, I did. I also liked not driving everywhere, which has been really huge in the last couple of months. I don't know if anybody else is sweating from the price of that. Um, but these transitions can be scary, right? Some of our kids are gonna get new teachers. They're gonna get new schools. Some of them are feeling pressured to make some major life decisions. Hey, graduating seniors, even the ones online, if you are feeling stressed and pressured to have it all figured out because you are graduating high school, don't. We all felt that way. None of us have had it figured out. And if we did think we did, well, it's been corrected, right? Yeah. And all the parents said, mm-hmm, yes, yes. And that's real. So as we're making transitions, the way we end one season and the way we start a new one Okay, there has to, that space in between is called a transition. And whatever you end a season with is also what you take into your next season. And so we're gonna talk about that this morning. Um, some people like transition. Um, part of me is like super competitive. <laughs> I like a good challenge. I'm like, oh, you don't think I can do it? Let me prove you wrong, <laughs> right? Then I have like my daughter who, if she doesn't think that it's gonna be worth her time, she doesn't see the value, she doesn't think she's gonna gain anything out of it, she pulls back and she actually will not transition. I have another kid who suffers from FOMO. If you don't know what FOMO is, it is the fear of missing out. And um, 
darling girl, she doesn't want to transition because she's afraid that if she transitions, she's gonna regret her choice. And maybe that other thing was actually better. And so she never actually makes difficult decisions to transition into something new. And then I have another son who, oh, sweet boy, I love him so much. He has a really hard time with transitions and even like really good ones. Like you get to go to baseball practice and a birthday party today. And he freaks out because it's too much. And some of us are familiar with that. We get freaked out when there's too much at one time and we feel a little bit of a loss of control. And then my, my youngest, um, oh man, he rushes. Part of his personality is to run a million miles a minute. But when he has a transition, he doesn't sit with the process and the tension of it long enough. So what ends up happening is he rushes through his transition and he hasn't taken, he hasn't actually grown through it. And so he's exactly right back where he started, but he hasn't gained anything. And that can be really frustrating. So if you're in the room and you're like, man, I feel like God's trying to teach me the same lessons all the time. You might be rushing. I need to slow down a little bit. Because, you know, those over and over cycles can get a little discouraging. So as we are celebrating these major transitions for our kiddos, also be mindful of the transitions that we are going through. Be mindful that not all of us endure these transitions the same. Right now, oh my goodness, look at how is that going? Can you guys see this? We gotta shake it. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's let's uh, uh, take out some of that air. And isn't this real? Right. When we we think we know what we're gonna do, and then we need to make some adjustments. Is the ice like watery in there? Oh. Okay. Go ahead. Open it. I know. This is this is like real life right here, guys. There we go. Thank you, helpers. Oh, I love it. So when we're transitioning, we're not just gonna go from one position to the next. This season of transitions, as we're watching it, right? Was this supposed to go over really smoothly? Yes, yes it was. This is the second service. You don't wanna know the problems we had for a service, right? Okay. But this is what it means to transition well. We slow down, we take a pause, we evaluate what changes need to be made, right? And our transitions are shaped by what we see, by what we hear, and by what we know. All right, so if you guys, let's just take a moment, we're gonna pray together. Can we do that? Yeah. All right. I always love praying right before we dive into the word. And so if you, whether you're here in the house or you're online, let's just take a moment to pray. And I'm gonna have you guys repeat after me. Are you guys ready? Holy Spirit, come. Open our hearts to the truth you have for us today. Amen. All right, so in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. Kiddos, did you bring your Bibles today? Oh man, oh man, it's a good thing we have it up on the screen. All right, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way walk in it. All right, so let's talk about this. Our transitioning, how are we posturing ourselves? When we talk about a posture, it's like, are we receiving or not receiving, right? Can I, can I receive a gift if I'm like this? No, that doesn't work, okay? The first part we wanna talk about is what we see. Okay, because it says whether you turn to the right or to the left. When I'm turning to your right, but my left, I got it. 
or your left, am I right? Okay, if I'm looking over here at Keanu and Hawaii, can I see if those young adults over there in that section are making goofy faces? I have no idea. They are probably, but I have no idea because I can't see it, right? But maybe I am seeing it. Maybe I'm distracted by what they're doing. Maybe my focus is on that because I'm looking over here, but oh, I don't want to miss out what's over here. And I can be distracted by what's going on and what I'm seeing around me. But the Lord actually wants us to be focused. So what are you focusing your eyes on? Are we refusing to see? I've done that before, right? Have you ever been in a situation where you knew it was bad, but you're like, let's just pretend like this isn't happening. Or how about maybe we take on lens that don't belong to us. I wear contacts, I need contacts. My daughter wears glasses, my son wears glasses. We don't wear each other's lenses. That would not work. But sometimes we let others' views change what we're focusing on and what we're seeing. We can also sometimes get things stuck in our eyes, right? I don't know about you guys, but that east wind, when it blows in, it blows in hard. And that dust getting in your eyes, it can be difficult to see. What are we exposing ourselves to see? My boys are currently in baseball right now, and it is super fun and a little crazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get a hole in my wall. I've just made peace with it. It's going to happen. Hopefully not this week. But when they are on the field, one of the things I hear the coaches say all the time is, look where you're throwing. Have you guys ever heard that before? What happens if I try to throw without looking? I mean, I know there's some great people doing some trick shots on TikTok and on the reels. I'm not that person, okay? I need to look where I'm throwing. And the same thing is happening. When you are transitioning, if you're looking at all the distractions around you or you're not seeing clearly, do you know where you're transitioning to? All right, how about this? How about our clarity of vision? God has a plan for you. Are you, do you know what he wants to transition you to? Because if you're looking here and looking over here, you can't see where God wants to lead. All right, the next part for us to really dive into. Okay, I'm gonna read the verse again. Whether you turn to the right or the left, got it, that's what we see, your ears will hear a voice behind you. Okay, here, our ears need to be open. Um, and how many of you know that there's a difference between hearing and listening? Yeah, kids are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's the same thing. And, and everyone else in the room is like, oh my goodness, there's a reason I'm yelling and it's because you're not listening. You may hear my words, but you're not listening. My daughter, and it's so funny, if you saw the screen, one of the slideshows that was up there, there was a girl that was like sitting with two kids in kid zone, looking all cute. Yeah, she's wearing headphones. That one's mine. Um, and it's an issue trying to hear. Can she hear when she has her headphones on? No. Drives me nuts. But how many of us do that? Kind of put our headphones on, kind of block everything else going on, right? Yeah. And so one of the things that we need to do is to learn to adjust our volume. Now, we have some rules in our house about when and when you cannot listen to music on the headphones. And one of those things is that if you have those headphones on, you better be able to hear. And some of us, we have the wrong stuff turned up in our heads and we need to turn some of that down. Right? And what are some of those hears that, and those things that we hear, the things that we turn the volume up on, those are our priorities. But what happens sometimes is what we have up is our inner dialogue. Kiddos, inner dialogue, do you guys know what that means? Inner dialogue means inner, like in your head, 
And dialogue is speaking. So it's the stuff we tell ourselves. Do you know that some of the things I tell myself are not kind? Some of the things I tell myself are lies. That's not good. And that's not God's heart for us. Do you guys know what God says about you? He says he loves you. He doesn't lie to you. He's not mean. In fact, do you know what he wants to say? Do you know what he says about you? We're going to look at it on the screen. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Okay, so we're watching what we're looking at. What are we focused on? We're thinking about what's coming in these ears of ours, making sure that we're dialing up to hear the voice of God for us. And next we're gonna talk about what we know, okay? I, wanna, I want you guys to take a look over here. How are things coming along with our ice cream experiment? Better than the first service? A Little bit, maybe, I don't know. Let's, let's take a look. How's it coming along? Oh, yeah, it's getting there. Did we, let's add some more ice. Or not ice, salt. Yep, there you go. All right. When we talk about having our heads up. Okay, so going back to our verse, Isaiah 30, 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, what we're focusing on with our eyes, right? Your ears will hear a voice behind you. We need to turn up the volume on what God is saying. Then it says this, this is the way walk in it. Okay. When God says this is the way, walk in it, it's because he does have good plans and purposes for you. It's because he loves you. And if we're not focused on what God has for us, if our heads aren't lifted up, right? Like if I'm like this, I can't really see what's going on. I have no idea if ice cream is actually happening or not over there, right? But when our heads are up, and you know this if you've ever had to do a job interview, that eye contact, that heads up, it's having confidence, it's having trust and assurance in the Lord that what he has for you is good. Why is that important when we talk about transitions? Because if I'm relying on all of myself to get me from one season to the next, it's not going to be enough. Because I'm going to mess it up every time. And I will keep going through the same things over and over again. But Jesus says you put, that we're supposed to put our trust in him. In Psalms 121.3 it says, He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. And that's why when we talk about what we know, what's in our heads, we can have that trust and assurance because it's not in ourselves, it's in God. All right. So how are we doing? Better. Better. All right, let's take a look at this. All right. What do we, oh, it's still pretty soupy. We're just, we're just having a day. We're just having a day. Um, and how many know that this is real? Right? We, I have the ingredients. They are measured out. I have everything laid out. It's soup. We're going to go through this smoothly. And then this happens. And that's real. When we've tried to do everything in our own control, in our own power, and it just doesn't work. Now, okay, let's go back. Remember me talking about my kiddos? Remember talking about them and the way they transition? Okay. If this was one of my kids, he would never, ever want to try this again. And some of you are stuck there. You have you've tried to transition, and you don't want to try anymore. You're afraid. Some, some of us are so 
nervous about, oh my goodness, what is everybody going to think, right? We're looking around us instead of saying, God, what are you asking me to be obedient to right now? And that being what we focus on. The Lord wants us to be able to transition from one season to the next, taking the joy, the health, and the wholeness with us. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to let my expectations go down with the ice cream. And if you've ever worked in kids' ministry, which we need more people, and you would, you'd want to be around people who are okay with you failing, we're the place for you. <laughs> we're so good about it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's, it's so real. Can we just, like, take a minute and know, like, it's, this, is, this is okay. And, you know, I really feel like the Lord is saying this to someone. There's someone who's stuck. You're actually, like, paralyzed by fear. And I don't know if it's here in the house, and I don't know if it's online. There's a, there's a paralyzing fear, and you are stuck because you're convinced that if you fail, that you're not worthy of love. And as someone who struggles with that, I'm really familiar with it. And that's not God's heart for you. So when we talked about those lies that we believe or the mean things that we say to ourselves, please know that is not God's heart for you. He loves you. And he has more for you on the other side of this. To, to celebrate these transitions. We've got a lot of kiddos who are going to be going through a lot in the next couple of days. This is not just a one and done service. Our kids are going to be transitioning and we are going to be celebrating with them. But as they are transitioning, we as a family want to pray over them. So if you are one of our kids who's promoting into kindergarten, you're promoting from kid zone, would you stand up? And if you are a kiddo, thank you, yes. If you're a kiddo who's transitioning into junior high, would you stand up? If you are a middle schooler who is making their way to high school, would you stand up? And if you are one of our young adults, well, I mean, you're a graduating senior, but you're like young adult range. Oh my goodness. Would you stand up? Okay, family, would you look around and see all these? This is our family. These are our kids. We want to pray a blessing upon them today. Would you extend your hands to them? And let's pray a blessing over these kids as they are transitioning. God, we pray over these sweet kids that we love so much. Lord, we pray that you would bless them in this season, that you would help them to transition well. That God, we would encourage them to see what you see, to not be distracted. We pray that they would learn to hear your voice and to turn down the volume on some of the other stuff going on. That God, they would learn to know you so that when they sense you saying, go this way, go this way, love, they would recognize your voice and they would follow. God, we love them so much. We pray that we would come alongside them we would support them. We would encourage them. We would be the aunts, the uncles, the family that surrounds them, encourages them, pours into them, and celebrates these moments in their lives. Thank you, kids. Amen. And, uh, yeah. And now, uh, you know, the message wasn't just for the kids. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys caught that. This is a family service. And I'm well aware 
that I feel like I'm constantly transitioning. I, it's an ongoing basis. And I've transitioned in grief and loss. And when I've transitioned in grief and loss, I enter into the next season in grief and loss. I take it with me. I take fear with me. I take exhaustion with me. I take that uncertainty, anxiety. And so I know that for some of us, we see that. We see that we're stuck and we're wanting more. We're not wanting to be stuck. And we're wanting there to be a healing and a restoration in our lives so that we can transition into the next scene, seeing what God sees, hearing what he's telling us to do and knowing and having the full confidence that we can trust him to do it. And so right now, I just wanna pray over every heart in this church. every heart online. God, would you come? Would you come? Would you help us to posture ourselves so that we can receive from you so that we're not distracted by what we see? We're not listening to the inner dialogue the lies, the unkind words, but we're tuning in to your voice. We are tuning in to what your heart is for us and trusting and knowing that your plans and heart for us are good. And I don't wanna miss a moment. And so this is for you in the house and online. If you've never said yes to Jesus, if you're tired of trying to do it on your own, this is your day. And it's a great day because what God has for you is so much more. And so if you wanna say yes to Jesus for the very first time, if you're online, type it in the chat, I'm saying yes to Jesus. And if you are here in the house, would you raise your hand so that I can pray with you? Yeah, I see your hand. Anybody else I don't want to miss? Okay. God, I thank you. I thank you for the yes. We thank you for the yes, because that's, that's what it is. It's yes to you. God, I pray that you would come and that you would be with my friend, that you would speak your life and your healing and your wholeness over them today, that they would begin to know you Come see me after service. All right. Would you guys stand up with me? As we are getting ready to like close out our service, I wanna speak a blessing over you. You ready? Okay. It's from Numbers chapter 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I love you, friends.
This freedom's untainted with you, this life you created. See the sun. And see the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white, turn to color all around. All is new in the Savior I am found. And this is living. Nothing like living with you This life you created I choose And see the sun now Bursting through the clouds Black and white to to color all around All is new In the Savior I am found And this is living now loves to celebrate. God, that you are celebrating these transitions. And so as we close our service today, I want to encourage you to go and meet some of our pastors out in the foyer, eat some donuts, play some games, throw the balloons around, and go with God. God's going to go with you. See you guys. Yeah.